The final weekend of the FIA ETRC is being held at Harama, close to Madrid, for the second year in a row. The circuit, which celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2018, is the spectacular venue for the showdown of this year's season. Two important decisions are still to be made. Who will be second in the ETRC category? Antonio Albafetti or Adam Lachko? Furthermore, will Ollie James, the Brit, claim the throne of the Grammar Cup, keeping his biggest opponent, Jamie Anderson, at arm's length? Bienvenidos al Jarama. Welcome to Jarama. The Spanish fans, more than 30,000 of them, are excited for the duel between Antonio Albafetti. The points chart shows it. Just three points between Albafetti and Lachko in second and third places. The Spaniard surely has a home advantage at Jarama, living close to Madrid, and he knows more or less each metre of asphalt, each corner better than his opponents. I hope we have a good fight without any problems, you know. And uh, I think that we have, to, oh, I have to say that uh, if he's quicker than me, he will be in second position. And if I am quicker than him and I am lucky, I will be in second position, you know. Adam Lachko, the Czech from the Czech Bagheera racing team, would like to turn things around and overtake Albafetti. His ambitious goal requires a close to perfect weekend without any incidents or technical problems. It's uh, his home track, but sometimes it's uh, advantage and sometimes it's, it's disadvantage. But I hope uh, we make nice racing weekend together and uh, better and the guy who have more luck is the second. In qualifying and Super Bowl on Saturday, the 2019 champion Jochen Hahn dominated even though he had had a tough couple of days. Hahn's father, Conrad Hahn, watched proudly as his son claimed the sixth title at Le Mans a week ago, but died shortly after. Connie, as the entire paddock called him, used to be a truck race driver himself. He co-founded the Team Hahn Racing Squad and was team boss as well as the spirit of the team. His death leaves a big gap. The championship title is won, now it's all about the show. We're here for the fans and our opponents. We'll do our best and we'll try to claim one or two victories just to round things up. We are not complete, but we will try to push through it and have some great races. We are not complete here, but we will do all for the and we will have great races. Jochen Hahn kept his promise and put his race truck on the best starting position. Pole for the 13th time this season. Next to him, Antonio Albafetti. The Spaniard is optimistic, having had a better position in Super Bowl than his opponent, Adam Lachko. I will try to do a good start, but it's going to be difficult to, to beat Jochen, you know. So I just, I just try to keep behind him. I don't want to have any troubles. And also I don't want to fight with uh, Sacha, you know, he's in third position. He needs the points for the, for the championship also. So I hope that nothing happens in the first corner and we can, we can come in alive for the championship. Right between the two fighting for second in the championship, Sasha Lentz on P3. And fourth, Steffi Halm. A German row, one in an MAM, one in an Iveco truck. Only fifth, though, is Adam Lachko, who had better times in qualifying, even better than Albafetti. But he's a long way back on the grid relative to his rival. I would like a little bit more front after Super Bowl, but it's very slippery and we don't know why it's slower than uh, qualifying. But it's happened. I'm five and I must fighting from the fifth position and I try the best. Lots of excitement ahead of the first ETRC race at Harama. The start. Jochen Hahn on the inside alongside the pit wall. He's on the inside on the run down to turn one, keeping Antonio Albafetti at bay. On board with Albafetti in number 23. The Spaniard ahead of Sasha Lentz, who is still third. Steffi Halm fourth, Adam Lachko, P5. 
The Czech driver needs to get closer to the front. He starts fighting with Steffi Halm. They've been battling since the first corner. But Halm hangs onto the place. Lachko elbows his way up alongside. The Czech being aggressive, but Steffi Halm hangs onto the place. At the back, almost, Erwin klein Nagelvoort, the Dutchman in the white Scania truck who's about to make a name for himself this weekend. Up front, Hahn ahead of Albathetti, then a gap to Sascha Lentz, another gap to Halm. The German is being chased by Lachko and Norbert Kisch, both previous European champions. The final lap, the last metres. Jochen Hahn heading for the finish line and his 13th win of the season. He does it in style with his signature victory drift. The chequered flag for Jochen Hahn, yet another win. Second, Antonio Albafetti and third, Sasha Lenz. It's a very emotional, moving victory for Jochen Hahn and for the entire team. The first win, the first trophy without his father. Everyone is thinking of Connie Hahn at this moment. The results of the first race at Harama. Jochen Hahn from Antonio Albafetti and Sasha Lentz third. Adam Lachko only fifth. The Grammar Cup decision is still to be made and Antonio Albafetti, second place, increases his lead over Adam Lachko to 10 points. There wasn't much more that he could have done. Yeah, sure. I mean, it was nothing I can do, you know. I just try not to make any any big mistakes or anything silly. So I just keep the second place. I was happy because I didn't see Adam on the back. So that was the main goal. So for the moment, we did it. And one more thing the Spanish race truck hero has to do. Welcome his fans. All the race drivers are taking a lap on the four kilometre long circuit in a double decker bus. More than 30,000 fans came to the circuit that weekend to see him, to cheer him on and to celebrate. Antonio Albafetti, the man who makes the chainsaws howl. The Grammar Cup could potentially be won by Ollie James in the second race of the weekend. The Brit leads the category. He has done so ever since the season opener at Masano and only has one rival left, Jamie Anderson, another Brit, last year's Grammar Cup champion, who had a very strong second half of the season and could fight James for the Grammar throw. It's truck racing, it's aggressive, um, and yeah, it's a lot of... Uh, it's a lot of positions at the end of the year that uh, are still to play for. And uh, yeah, we've been working all year. Jamie's been working all year and all, and all the other teams in the Grammar Cup. It's all still to play for. And OK, if we fight, we fight. But uh, if it's clean, it's no problem. I'm not really fussed either way where, where we lie. Um, I think we've done a good job so far this year. And with, especially with how many DNFs we've had, uh, I think it's good for us to be fighting at the top there still. Um, you know, we have consisted to be in the top 10 as well. Um, so yeah, it's good. Thanks to the reverse grid rule, René Reinert is on pole position for race two. Next to him is the Portuguese driver, José Rodríguez, who was seventh in race one. <laughs> Norbert Kish, the Hungarian, lines up third. Next to him, Adam Lachko, who needs to win at all costs if he wants to fight for second in the championship. The start from Norbert Kish's perspective, on board in the Mercedes truck of Team Tankful Fierutz Fansig.
it's an impressive image when the five-ton trucks are this close together. Next to Kish is Adam Lachko. The Hungarian won't give up his third position, though, behind Rodriguez and Reinert. Jochen Hahn is eighth. Behind him is Anthony Janiek, the Frenchman in his yellow MAN in ninth. On board with Jamie Anderson. Listen carefully. The spring breaks on the left side. Anderson tries to turn the track next to the tyre barrier, but without success. A crash is unavoidable. It's the final incident of a half-successful, half-disappointing season. Red flag, race stopped. You know, we're in the top ten. Sort of, we struggled to do Grammar Cup again. Um, so we really wanted to win this, to move forward and go on. But, you know, sometimes it can't work like that. I think we've shown that we've had the pace on a lot of the Grammar Cup. We've had, what, 13 wins? Um, this season, but it's not just about that, it's a whole package and we haven't been able to tie, tie it all together. The last hope for the title is gone. Unbelievably, Anderson can even drive back to the paddock after that heavy impact. The team and a couple of helping hands try to change the broken spring quickly to be part of the restart for that race, but the Anderson team is running out of time. The second start about 50 minutes later without the truck of Jamie Anderson, without René Reinert as well. Reinert is missing. The German had to come to the pits immediately after an attack from Adam Lachko at the beginning of lap two. It damaged the tyre and it damaged the wheel rim. More about that after the race. Jose Rodriguez, the Portuguese driver, is in the lead. On board with Jochen Hahn. It's lap one. The champion is behind Norbert Kish. Going through the same part of the circuit where Anderson had his moment. Jochen Hahn goes off the road, but he catches his truck, pulls it back on track. Jochen Hahn gets lucky. On board with Jose Rodriguez. On lap four, the man from Team Revo Connaught is under pressure from Adam Lachko. Rodriguez can't stop the attack of the Czech driver, nor Norbert Kish. Both overtake him. That's in the so-called arena of the circuit at Harama, where most of the spectators are. Not long after, starting lap six, the Portuguese driver is overtaken by Hahn, then Albafetti and Hahn. He falls back to sixth, just keeping Sasha Lentz behind him. Albafetti chasing Adam Lachko is fourth, followed by Jochen Hahn. They're both trying to get to the podium. On lap eight, this the view from Steffi Harms' truck. She gets it wrong and skates off into the gravel. The Iveco driver most likely slipped on some oil put down on the track from Fabio Citignola's rig. For Hahn and Albafetti, it's one place closer to the front. Overall, it was a bit slippy, a bit greasy everywhere in that second race. So I don't know if there was someone spreading it. In the end, it's very disappointing. I could have got third, but more importantly, I could have got the points. Ollie James in the race in 10th, but the best of the Grammar Cup pilot. He's on course for the title, as Jamie Anderson was a non-starter in the restarted race. The final lap. Ollie Jane's colleague Adam Lachko leads ahead of Norbert Kish. Third is Antonio Albafetti. Fourth, Jochen Hahn. And fifth now, Sasha Lentz, who was able to overtake Rodriguez. The Czech driver wins his third race of the ETRC season. But the win is in danger, as Lachko is under investigation due to the contact with René Reinert on lap two of the aborted race. The Czech is celebrated, though, as the winner. But is punished with a 10-second penalty due to that attack against Reinert, and he falls back to sixth. Lachko loses the win, and the gap to Albafetti increases even more. It's more than on the morning, but Antonio is at home, and he is very strong here. But we will see tomorrow. I would like to try more for the second position. Let's have a look again at that attack against Reinert. This is what it looked like, a small push, which led to Reinert missing his braking point. And afterwards, the Czech in the Freightliner pushes the German in the Iveco to the grass. Reinert returns to the track ahead of Kish, but had to go to the pits with that tyre damage. 
and then missed the restart. The result then, Norbert Kish inherits the win. Alba Fete up to second, Hahn third. The 10th placed Oddie James triumphs in the Grammar Cup. He can't now be displaced from the throne. The new Grammar Cup champion celebrates his title win with another podium here at Karama, together with Eduardo Jose Rodriguez and Irving Klein-Nagelvoort. It's been a tough year, um, but to come out Grammar Cup winner, it's all we wanted when we started from, from the beginning of the year. We thought it was possible after Misano, and we pushed like hell the first half of the year because we knew we were faster in the second half of the year from, from uh, most onwards. And yeah, we have done it here. A team that's still new, don't touch racing, is always up for some fun. The cook, we'll call him Ian, lost the internal weight loss challenge and has to make good on his bet at Harama. On Saturday evening, he took a jog around the circuit in the traditional dirndl. Of course, it was to the enjoyment of the entire paddock. The bet didn't mention a shower, but well, you know what they say. Sunday at Harama, time for race three. Adam Latchko kept his promise, securing the pole position, but he's still fighting with the penalty of the day before. I'm not so very happy with the decision, but I nothing change is not possible but today in the time practice I'm first and I'm fighting more it's uh, more push me kick me into my ass yeah now Adam is very fast he did pole position so that will be <laughs> a little bit difficult for us you know but uh, yeah of course I will try to, to do my best take points and everything will decide in the last race I think the Spaniard is only fifth on the grid Steffi Halm, next to him, is sixth. There are even more spectators on Sunday than on Saturday. The start of the third race, with the view from the rear camera of Sasha Lent, who is starting third next to Norbert Kish. At the first corner, Alba Fetti shows himself to be very determined indeed. Zero tolerance to the truck in front of him. Luis Rafrenko, the second Spaniard in the field, goes wide through the gravel. In front of him, Kurzim, Jose Rodriguez and Jamie Anderson are all battling. And then Anthony Janiek arrives on the scene. There's a big bang and more damage to Anderson's truck. On lap two, the leading group goes up the hill under the Dunlop Bridge. Lachko, Hahn, Sasha Lentz taking a wild ride off the circuit. He's got Alba Fete right next to him. On lap three, Alba Fetti overtakes, coming out of the corner. They're side by side on the drag up the hill. He has more momentum and overtakes Sasha Lentz to claim third place. Irving klein Nagelvoort, the Dutchman in number 15, is 10th, the best placed of those in the Grammar Cup. But shortly afterwards, he's pushed out of the ETRC points by Andre Kurzim. The Scania pilot finishes the race after a stop in the pit lane in 15th. Too bad. Lap seven, the top three, Lachko, Hahn and Alba Fete. They don't get too close to each other at this point and the Spaniard happy with third place. That means he would go into the last race with a six point and two positions advantage against Lachko. After 12 laps, Adam Lachko takes the third win of the season. Behind him, Hahn and Alba Fete. The top three in the championship together on the podium. The duel for second will be decided in the last race of the year. Yeah, it's six points. Uh, maybe yesterday point when we lose. We, maybe on the end it's missing. But this is the racing. And we fight until last lap. And maybe some luck stay with on my side. The result of race three. An impressive seventh place for Fabio Citignola his best result of the season.
for race four. The top eight finishers from race three line up in reversed order. Rene Reinert is on pole position. A familiar situation in a reverse grid race for the boss of the big logistics company. Second is Fabio Citignola, the young German having his first front row start of his career. La Ola for Citignola. Third on the grid, Steffi Halm, the German next to Norbert Kisch on row two. The Spanish fans want to see their local hero Antonio Albafetti at the front. He starts from sixth. Albafetti attacked immediately by Lachko as the lights go green. The trucks dive down to turn one. Reiner is in front, keeping his position on a better line through the turn than City Nola. Out wide goes Sasha Lentz. Andre Kurzem in number 11 dives up the inside as well. But Rene Reinert has engine problems. He pulls to one side and heads slowly to the paddock. Norbert Kirsch, who started fourth, takes over the lead. Still on the first lap, Lachko, having already overtaken Lentz and Kurzem, is chasing Albafetti. Between them is City Nola, the young German under attack. Lap three, up the hill, the top four. Behind them is action. City Nola loses momentum. And he's almost pushed aside by Lachko and Lentz. Lentz goes round the outside. Lachko looks for a way through. Lentz off the circuit. City Nola spins. He's lucky that nobody collects him. Everybody scatters in avoidance. This was very unfortunately from Adam Lachko. I think it was irresponsible of Lachko. Upwards we were in a row, but he wasn't next to me. And going downhill at 160 kilometers, the fastest part of the circuit, he pushed me on the right rear sideways uh, due to the push of Sasha Lentz next to me, and Adam pushed me into Sasha. They have a slow, slow speed, they have a lower speed. And after he pushed uh, Sasha, and I used this situation and I passed him. In that case, Adam Lachko has his own opinion. The Czech doesn't get a penalty, which is questionable perhaps this time. On board on lap six with Luis Rethwenko, the witness of a crash between Anderson and Citignola. Rethwenko crashes into the truck of Citignola. Bad luck for Citignola, but for the Spaniard, he can at least continue in the race. Eventually. Also on lap six, Steffi Halm second, Hart behind her. The champion, then you've got Albafete fourth. These three chasing Norbert Kish, who's already ahead by five seconds. With that damaged windscreen, Luis Rothwenko is black flagged from the race on safety grounds. The risk too great that something will happen. Norbert Kish wins ahead of Jochen Harm, four and a half seconds back, having overtaken Steffi Harm. Fourth is Albafetti ahead of Lachko, meaning the Spaniard is second in the championship. For us, uh, second place is uh, a very big result, you know, because the team has worked quite a lot and there is not a, a lot of budget in, in the, with the team, you know. But at the end we did it, we make it and I'm very happy, very happy. After a victory in the second race on Saturday, the Hungarian Norbert Kish claims a real win in the last race of the season. It's a bittersweet year for him though. This was a hard season. I, I'm happy that we finished with a victory, but yeah, we are a little bit far from our expectations, you know, so yeah, it's, it's overall it's a little bit disappointing the season, but yeah, you know, I look forward for the winter and I hope that we can open a new chapter uh, starting next season. The result of the fourth race. Kish, Hahn, Halm, the top three. The man of the weekend, in a lot of ways, though, is Jochen Hahn, who did an amazing job with four podium places. All this coming at the end of a very emotional week for the new champion. I didn't want to come here. Now I can talk about it, as my father passed away this week. It wasn't easy, but I have to say, 
Our lives and the life of my father was racing and the track race in particular. Yesterday, the track race gave me back some courage and the focus. Now I can talk about it and therefore I'm very proud of the weekend. To be proud, even though in a completely different way, Irving Klein Nagelvoort wins the Grammar Cup race for the very first time. The Dutchman is delighted. I'm very happy and I would never have expected to already succeed in my first year here. I had some luck, a good start, a really good one. I was behind Jamie and saw that he had a damaged tyre and that was my chance to overtake and he held up the drivers behind. So yeah, it went well. The final points charts of the season. Jochen Harm, the champion with a 102 point gap. The well-earned champion of the 2019 season. Next year begins on the last weekend of April at the Hungara Ring in Budapest. It's been a great season of racing. There's more to come in 2020. Until then, all the best.